that's why this level is such a major technical resistance because that was the buyer level back then that was where everyone bought so once we broke it's now where everyone that bought in here is actually selling welcome back to library of wealth in the latest interview with gareth soloway and ben cowan they address the current state of Bitcoin and why now is a crucial time to watch the crypto market heading into the last part of 2023. Gareth addresses the difficulty Bitcoin is having with breaking out under the current market conditions. He believes that Bitcoin may experience further declines, potentially pushing the leading cryptocurrency below its previous bear market low. After analyzing Bitcoin's price fluctuation in the past, Gareth points out a significant technical resistance level between $41,000 and $42,000. This technical resistance has made it challenging for Bitcoin to break through. On Monday, the price of Bitcoin decreased as investors anticipated more significant changes in the market and the economy due to potential rate hikes. Additionally, large cryptocurrency holders have been sending unusually high amounts of Bitcoin to exchanges. As a result, Bitcoin briefly dipped below $29,000 before experiencing a minor rebound. Due to the anticipation of the Federal Reserve's upcoming and aggressive rate hikes, Several analysts, Gareth Soloway included, are issuing a word of caution regarding Bitcoin's price. They believe that Bitcoin could potentially drop further to an unbelievable $19,000. The next Federal Open Market Committee meeting is imminent, and it is widely expected that the Federal Reserve will resume its rate hike strategy, despite the previous temporary pause. Let's get into the latest interview with Gareth Soloway and Ben Cowan, where they discuss what's next for Bitcoin and the market weaknesses we're seeing in crypto. Don't forget to share your thoughts and comments down below and leave a like if you enjoy the content we do here. We've talked about how this channel was insanely hard to break out of. And again, a lot of people don't understand why it's so so such big resistance. And I want to just show you here, folks, if you go back to the beginning of the bull market, right? So we were already trading up here and we had this big move to about the 41, 42,000 level and we retraced right there. And it stalled and then it rallied to 65,000. Then we came down three full times one, two, three, and we rallied to 69,000. And then we kind of came down eventually consolidating right here and breaking down. And that's why this level is such a major technical resistance because that was the buyer level back then. That was where everyone bought. So once we broke, it's now where everyone that bought in here is actually selling, right? They're like, oh my goodness, I got back to break even. I'm going to unload. In addition, it also has the aspect of being a technical level that I see. And so I've shorted multiple times into this level, um, as I'm sure many, many hundreds, if not thousands of other technical traders have. So here we are breaking down, trading right around th uh, 29,000. And you could see how we kept on getting rejected. It, even when closing above, you had a reversal candle. This is a topping tail. So topping tails are powerful. This was a green candle. This is called a reversal candle in technical analysis. And then we were hugging this lower level and finally the break point. So I wouldn't say that we're definitely heading straight down, but I think Ben and I would both agree that there's probably some weakness in Bitcoin coming in. Just in terms of the market coming down and potentially making a lower low down here, to me, it's honestly, I've become more convinced that that's going to happen based on what's been happening in the stock market relative to Bitcoin. And I think you put it perfectly is that altcoin money has really been what's been propping Bitcoin up, right? Alts are going lower. Bitcoin has been re the recipient of a lot of that money and it's been grinding higher. You haven't really seen the Nasdaq's been making insane moves to the upside nvidia stock i mean take a look at this chart on nvidia here this incredible move right We're, we made huge new all-time highs on nvidia now granted it was the ai story but it was drawing liquidity away but there was no recipient you didn't see bitcoin breaking out when nvidia had this move to the upside so that's a concern and the concern becomes that if the stock market, let's just say we pull back to this gap fill on a technical basis, this is probably where we're headed back to on NVIDIA. If so if we drop, that would be about 30% on NVIDIA. Where is Bitcoin at that point? Where is the altcoin market? And I, I would be scared to think about where the altcoin market is at that point. I think one of the couple things that I want to just bring up is, is number one is that the dot com situation is what I've talked about for the last year plus, two years, in that 
you have all these crappy, I mean, it, it, living through and trading through the dot coms, there was pet.com, there was, you know, I make you a, a, a dinner.com. I mean, like every crappy idea was thrown out there and they attached a dot com to it and it got a ridiculous valuation. People would buy it. And the idea here is if you look at the, the comparisons of what we've seen in the crypto markets with these coins and these these meme coins it's so eerily similar and what we know from the dot coms is that you had to have a washout where i mean think about how many dot coms when you came in 2001 2002 out of that period how many dot coms were really left at that point i mean it was it, at least the name brand ones there was maybe 10 maybe 15 maybe 20. well very similar you would probably expect the same thing with the altcoins right so there will be some that survive i think you'd agree with that ben but it will be way less than you have out there. And by the way, if you look at the NFT market right now, I mean, that talk about a market that hasn't even bounced yet. I mean, that hasn't even had a slight bounce. Just take a look at this chart too, which is Fed balance sheet, right? So you had the pop in the Fed balance sheet when the financial crisis, the bank's crisis. But if you look here, right, we're now making new lows. And so there's this, this the jaws opening up, right? Where you have less and less liquidity in the system, but the stock market has continued higher. And the reason that impacts crypto is because it's it's all liquidity, right? It doesn't matter if it's if it's a stock, if it's a if it's a commodity, or if it's a um, if it's a crypto. It all has to do with how much money is in the system. How much money do people have to actually buy um, buy things with? I think we've seen the economic data again in the past week since our last stream we saw other economic data i think productivity might have been one that was down uh that missed expectations there's been a bunch we got some european data out uh, i think in the last 24 hours that was just horrendous so at some point the the labor market will crack but i think that's been you know if you look at a dam and what's that's the one thing plugging the dam from breaking and flooding the whole scenario here so so i think it's it's super interesting and i, I do want to mention that we're both very bullish longer term, but we just try to keep it real, right? I'm not going to come on here and Ben's not going to come on here and be like, hey, guys, you know, to the moon with Bitcoin and everything like that. We want to make sure that people get on the right side of the trade uh, or at least have a good indication about the likely probability of a move. And, and that's really what it is. So we are both bullish longer term, especially on Bitcoin. But we want you guys to at least be understanding of what the data is showing us. I mean, look how perfectly 2023 is still following the average of of sort of the last two pre having years. So if it, if it wants to follow that, then it would still mean there's still, uh, you know, this level right here, by the way, if we were to go down to this level, it would still correspond to around $23,000. Um, and then perhaps perhaps we end up getting a recession sometime late this year, early next year, where we get that final final scare right before the real right. for the real move back up to the yeah. Both Gareth and Ben emphasize the importance of the $41,000 resistance level as it now acts as a selling point for those who bought at that price. Technical traders have shorted Bitcoin multiple times near this level, adding further pressure and volatility. Soloway notes that the recent rejection near $29,000 suggests potential weakness in Bitcoin's price and the possibility of further downward movement. Ben supports the idea that Bitcoin historically tends to roll over around the June through July timeframe. He speculates on reasons for this pattern, including pre-halving years, as well as pre-election years. However, both agree that while there may be short-term fluctuations, they remain bullish on Bitcoin long-term. A parallel is drawn to the dot-com era, where numerous companies with shady business models saw inflated valuations simply by attaching dot-com to their names. Gareth draws a comparison to the current crypto market, where a multitude of altcoins and meme coins have emerged, many of which will not survive. Soloway advises that investors be cautious, recognizing the historical patterns and the uncertainties surrounding the crypto market's short-term movements, while maintaining a bullish outlook on Bitcoin long-term. What do you think about the latest interview with Gareth and Ben Cowan? And what are your thoughts on the reasons behind Bitcoin's stagnation around the $30,000 mark? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.